shoot me in my ass. In my ass! And at the end of my concert, I could pull my pants down and show my ass. Like, this is what y'all did to me in Memphis. Shoot me in the ass. Shoot me in the ass. Shoot me right there in my ass. Give me another pocket. Put it in my ass. Come on. Come on. Shoot me in the ass. Come on. Shoot me in the ass. Right in the middle. Come on. Put it in my ass. Put it in my ass. Put it in my ass. Like a thing. Put it in my ass. Put it in my ass. Come on. Right here in the ass. Mm -hmm. All that is all part of the game, man. I done seen people do stuff. I'm talking about these guys ain't no joke, but they done do stuff that they really don't feel good about because right. it's part of breaking into that Hollywood big money level side of the game. Right. right. But I am wise enough to realize, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, look, until you meet them people, man, you can't judge them off nothing you saw on TV. <laughs> it's really a script. But you know what I'm saying? We don't go by the script willingly because we still in the streets bill we yeah. be in the rooms where the streets be there yes sir. so we we ain't we ain't hiding up in hollywood no. where oh uh, no all my checks cover everything i don't have to get out of here and go work no more right we out here with the people so that's yeah. why we hesitate when it comes to doing certain things hollywood might ask us to do because yeah. we're in the streets because you can't always tell people um when people said, well, Bill, what, what's your what's your stop? I said, if I can't go to the barbershop, if I can't go back to the barbershop, no matter what role I take, whatever I do, if I can't go back to the barbershop in my neighborhood and be comfortable with them dudes, then don't do it. Because they the realest cats. And yeah, that, that barbershop is the parameter for me, for every, every person in the culture, because that's what we talk about sports, that's what we talk about our ladies, that's what we talk about raising our kids. And I think that's where all that authentic real man talk come from well you know i tell people out there man it's a go path like on that movie 300 yeah <laughs> go path to go around and get to them yeah it's a go path to go around and get to the people man and that's the path i'm taking now this go path don't come with as much money as some of the people who's taking the hollywood path of Correct. course i'm not knocking nobody you see right everybody's lanes for everybody yeah but i'm actually I'm happy with who I am because I'm a man of humble accommodations. I'm from nothing. So I've never seen all that. Right. So I'm not missing all of that. I really which is actually, Which is actually kind of cool. Good morning, America and the rest of the world. Xander J. Hobson here, stand-up comedian and entertainer, director and producer of boxing documentaries and internet troll to those who need internet troll. This here is Corey Holcomb, the black man's black man. Brought to you by the Brain Artist Movement. Hey, listen, folks, we're trying to go to the platform, so please subscribe, like the video, share it. And by all means, leave a comment in the comment section if you enjoy checking out the feedback from these videos that I make, as well as, you know, exchanging opinions and points of views with y'all. And I can't stress enough that there may be a shadow ban on this channel. It has been brought to my attention that all of my subscribers are not getting the notifications when I put out a video. So, you know, for that reason, I need you to treat the like, share, and subscribe button like that chick or that guy that you're trying to get next to. So anyway, man, Corey Holcomb is the black man's black man, the black man's version of Archie Bunker or somewhere in there. It's been so long since I've done the promo for that, I don't remember. But I said all that to say this. Is the LGBTQ using its power and influence to buck break African American actors and entertainers. It's number one. Two, are African American actors and entertainers prostituting themselves to the LBGTQ Number three, where does this leave up and coming actors and entertainers like myself? Individuals who want to make it on their talent and the content of their character. Individuals who don't want to compromise and sell out. Folks who want to put in an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. You know, for me, I can only speak for my journey. Once I put the dress on and I had that fire, that fire was put out. Yeah. And I only did it one time. So imagine doing it three times, four times. But then Tyler Perry did, he got stronger. I don't know the rules. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not, this is what happened to me. I'm not here to knock another brother because that's their path. Yeah. That's one thing I don't do is knock my brothers because that's their path. But I'm saying my path, when I put on a dress, it came with a, 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 a demon baby mama and a starter kit for, for hell. That's what happened to me. You haven't seen me since, to be honest. But then I, 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 I feel stronger though. Would you like warn other stand-up comedians about the dress? Yeah, I had an interview too where I, 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 I would do it. I would do it eloquently and say I wouldn't wear the dress if you're chosen. You know, some people can wear a dress that doesn't affect them. But you know, um, I don't know. For me, it didn't work. So I can say I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise anybody to do it. When I look at everybody who's done it, you know that that dress thing. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's just a way it's a passageway into making money in Hollywood, especially so you're saying it's for a, black people. A rites of passage for black talent. We got males. Get, we gotta get the nigga in the dress. We gotta be in the dress. This is what they do to people. It's almost like motherfucker. Look, he go to plate. You need the spanks right, in order to get the banks. You got to taste this shit. Got it. Before we bless you. <laughs> oh God. And for some people. They'll be like, okay, I'm going to go and knock this shit out, get it over with. Well, let me ask you this. Because is it for I tell all you, men I tell you, or is it just for black men? Well, I know it's especially for black men. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, lesbians, gays, and hermaphrodites, if you don't know anything else about Hollywood, you know that they are notorious for casting African Americans in the most despicable roles imaginable. Fools. Fools, criminals, pimps, hoes, pretty much the pariahs of society. You take Holly Berry, for example. This woman is a great actress. However, in order to be nominated and to receive an Academy Award in the movie The Mobster's Ball, she had to play the part of an unfaithful wife who had a graphic sex scene with a white character. Denzel Washington, another stellar actor, a member of Hollywood's A-list. In order for him to be nominated and to receive an Academy Award, he played the role of a despicable, dirty cop. Star Wars, for example. If you know anything about Star Wars, Billy D. Williams played the part of space pirate Lando Calrissian. And if you know anything about the characteristics of Lando Calrissian, you know that he's pretty much nothing more than a slick, underhanded nigga with cowardly tendencies. Now, this is the image of African Americans that Hollywood has presented to the world in a galaxy far, far away. The black guy is a slick, underhanded nigga with cowardly tendencies. Nowadays, it's not uncommon to see an African-American actor, a male in particular, cast in the role as a member of the LGBTQ. And if they're not cast in the role as a member of the LGBTQ, their character is doing something that is LGBTQ-ish. Now let's be clear about something. I don't have a problem with an African American being cast in a role as a member of the LGBTQ because that is a fair depiction of our society. However, what I do have a problem with is when they cast African Americans as members of the LGBTQ, more than likely it is the worst example of the LGBTQ. When your child sees all this chaos in the world, the motherfucking men who stand on something start to look like the enemies. There are things that the children, the people, the citizens should not see. Mm -hmm. Look at them like they normal. That's what society wants you to act like. Oh, ain't nothing wrong with what they doing. They not fucking up the society. It's all disrespect. Wow. In my opinion. Wow. It's all disrespect. So, but we're there's a there's an agenda to 
being pushed through the media for us to accept that. Okay, the world is changing. We're supposed to accept it. But if that's acceptable, how come polygamy isn't acceptable? Because where where one man could have multiple women. True that. That's give illegal. That's, give, that's, a lot of people don't have that. Give them that choice. But You're right. You can have right. this. Right. If that wait, you mean to tell me homosexuality had the power to redefine marriage. Homosexuality used to be in the DSM. And the DSM is the book of that the list of the Bible of insanity. A cuckoos. Right? The book of cuckoos. It used to be something that was deemed as you got a, men a mental issue. So you mean to tell me it got out of that book and into the hearts of middle America, but having multiple wives is still illegal? So the reason this country will not allow you to have multiple wives is because you might be able to get on your feet if you build a family like that. If you build a dynasty, a legacy. If it's you mm. and your woman and your woman and y'all building something, you won't need them. Growing up, I knew gays and lesbians. And I wouldn't go as far as to say that we were friends, but we were definitely all right. And the only reason why we wasn't friends, because when I grew up, everybody stayed in their own lane and we were all separated by the boundaries of respect. But I said all of that to say this, all the gays and lesbians that I knew growing up, they were all dignified people. And in all honesty, if you didn't know these individuals personally, you wouldn't know what their sexual orientation was. Which brings me back to the crux of my argument. Is the LGBTQ community buck-breaking African-American actors and entertainers? Are African-American actors and entertainers prostituting themselves to the LGBTQ power structure in Hollywood and entertainer? If you saw the movie Pulp Fiction, you know that Ven Reigns' character suffered a humiliating emasculation by being violently raped on screen by a white guy in a black leather outfit. Now, wait one goddamn minute. Pulp Fiction had an all-star cast. And you're telling me, out of all the actors in Pulp Fiction, you mean the black guy had to be the one who was brutally raped on screen? Now, in all fairness to Pulp Fiction, Christopher Walton's character suffered a similar humiliating emasculation by having to go through a large majority of the movie with a watch up his ass. So I get it. Pope Fiction was somewhat fair about the emasculation of a black man and the, blast and the emasculation of a white man on screen. But to be perfectly honest with you, I'm an African American and I am concerned about the image of African Americans. Therefore, I don't give a damn what the white image looks like on screen. If you saw the movie, The Onion Film, you know that the actor, Franklin Seals, his character suffered a similar humiliating emasculation when he had to act out the part of getting down on his knees and performing oral sex on the character, James Woods. If you saw the movie, Central Intelligent, you know that The Rock and Kevin Hart done things that were LGBTQ-ish. Now I want to change directions briefly in order to drive home my point. There was a time when Hollywood and entertainment was largely ran by male heterosexuals who were mostly Jewish. During that time, they had something called the casting couch. And basically, the whole aim or goal of the casting couch was, if you wanted to play, you had to pay. And often enough, some beautiful up and coming woman, she had the opportunity to further her acting career by playing on the casting couch with the powers that be in Hollywood. However, if she had values and morals and a code that she lived by, 
she took her ass back to Kansas or wherever the hell she came from because she realized that Hollywood wasn't for her. Now, I said that to say this, at this current point in time, Hollywood seems to be ran largely by members of the LGBTQ. And for that reason, this is why you see a lot of things going on that is LGBTQ-ish. Now, I said all of that to say this, right? Growing up, I knew guys who prostituted themselves to gay men with money. Now, some of these guys were high end and they got cars and money out of the gay men whom they prostituted themselves to. Some of these guys, they weren't as sophisticated. Some of these guys were poor and the only thing they prostituted themselves for was sneakers, food, and at times, a place to live. Now, I said all that to say this. We're not gonna put all the blame on members of the LGBTQ and Hollywood and entertainment. No, we gotta point the finger at some of these African-American actors who take these parts. Now, this is acting, and I do understand that the individuals who are acting out these roles that are LGBT Jewish, they have a choice. They have a choice. And you have some actors that wouldn't take parts or roles that go against their values and morals and the code that they live by. There is something called a personal choice. So again, we can't put it all on the LGBTQ. Some of it, some of the blame for what we are seeing on screen has to be placed on the African American actors that take these roles. Now I'm gonna get ready to wrap this up. I think I done pretty much covered this in every detail imaginable. But I want to wrap this video up by saying this. I'm not here to knock any actor for doing whatever it is they felt they had to do. Uh, acting and entertainment, it's a rough grind. And the shoes get scuffed because the road is rough. You hear the horror stories about actors and entertainers being poverty stricken. When I was a kid, all I wanted to be was on TV. You know, I don't, I don't want nothing else. My father told me to just keep the faith, keep believing in that. A lot of missteps, man. Flunking out of college, you know, getting fired from some pretty cool jobs, and then, uh, you know, becoming homeless, you know, breaking off into stand up at 27 becoming homeless for three years, you know, living in a car, driving up down the road, you know, trying to make it, all with this notion that one day I was gonna have Steve Harvey show. So, understand that Hollywood is rough, and if a part comes up involving something that is LGBTQ in nature, and that part is gonna change your life, I understand, you know, it's not my place, I'm not condemning anybody for doing what they got to do to put food in their stomach, to get their own apartment, to get their life in gear to take care of their family. But I am reporting on this because I am concerned about the image of the African Americans. There are a lot of actors that I have a lot of respect for who have done things that I would consider LGBTQ in nature. You take Tyler Perry. I have an immense degree of respect for this man. This man has worn a dress and he has put countless African Americans to work by playing the part of Medea. So again, I don't want you to think that I'm shitting on anyone because I'm not. But again, I'm one of these individuals. I live by a code. I have values that are unshakable. And I have a code that I live by that can't be bought or sold. Now, if you find yourself in any way being insulted by something that I said here, the only thing I can say to you is this. Go get you some goddamn therapy. You did or you're doing what you have to do in order to come up, and I'm doing what it is that I have to do in order to come up. 
You got to get that back. So real quick, if you could talk right now to the to the young Corey Holcomb and give him the best advice in the world, what would you say to young Corey Holcomb? Job well done. You stayed the course. Man, it was so many times, man, where I would see guys moving up because they did something that I felt wasn't, my principles wouldn't let me do it. Right. But I had to catch myself and be like, yo, Corey, why are you worried about what they doing? Keep doing yours and have faith. Mm -hmm. And that's, man, everything happened the way it should have happened. Okay. I'm here doing the Bill Bellamy thing out of here. Top we on Bellamy. Hollywood Bullet Come man, on, we on man. Hollywood Bullet I'm done with it. Bam.